I'm going here because uh, I went over it in the advanced lesson. I'm going to go over it briefly with the whole Ustream population and those that follow us through Ustream today concerning a question of tithing. Now, as you know, we don't do lessons on tithing, and we're not every week pushing tithing like the Christian churches, all right? But one thing that's for sure, tithing is a law that's still instituted within the earth. And I have to put this out there because you have some people out there on YouTube and other social networks using scriptures in error to claim that tithing is done away with. Now, usually when they do this, they'll go to a scripture and then close the book and start talking without understanding what that scripture is actually saying. So you must be able to decipher what the Bible is saying opposed to what they are saying because what they're saying would make sense in the context they're misrepresenting the scripture in. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9 and 18, and I'm going to read this because this is a scripture that I, I heard is going through different social networks and Facebook and all that, saying that Paul, who was the disciple, was also saying that you're not supposed to tithe or receive money while doing the work. And I'm going to show you the deceptive, the deception in them using this scripture. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 18. Read. Which is my, what is my reward then? What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. They'll look at you and they say, see, you're supposed to make the gospel of Christ without charge. This is what they're using now. And do you know this scripture is saying the reverse of that? Of what they're claiming it? I'm going to show you. It's not saying you're not supposed to receive anything while doing the truth. But if you take this scripture to an unlearned person or if you unlearn yourself and have examined this scripture to mean that, that's an error. Read. It's going to show you. What is my reward then? What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, when I preach the gospel, I make the gospel of Christ without charge. And they say you're not supposed to charge based on this scripture. Read that I abuse not my power in the gospel that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So I'm going to ask you all a question and I'm going to answer it. I don't need you to answer. it. I'm going to answer it. The question I'm going to put out there is, is this scripture saying that you're not supposed to receive any money while teaching? Now, if you find out that it's not saying that. If anyone that believed it based on this scripture, if you found out that it wasn't saying that. Will you actually repent from, from those thoughts and just put that away? And I'm saying this because I'm going to prove to you right now that, a matter of fact, Paul in Corinthians 9 is saying the reverse of what they're teaching erroneously in this scripture. Before I go there, I'm going to show you what those that are teaching this scripture like that are suffering from. Let's go to Peter's 3 and 15. Real quick. Because they'll just read that one scripture in total error. But I'm going to set the record straight so that you'll know what the scripture said. Read it. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Read. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Is salvation. Read. Even as our beloved brother Paul. Paul. Who Paul, wrote the book of Corinthians. He sent those letters to the elders of the church. Read. Also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto Put you. That down. Read it. Uh, verse Put 16. Down. Read it. As in all his epistles, speaking in them of those things, or these things, and which are some things hard to be understood. Some things are what? Hard to be understood. So you have to realize some letters of Paul are hard to be understood for some, and we're going to show you who. Read. <laughs> Which they that are unlearned. They which are unlearned. And unstable. Rest. And unstable. So they're unstable scripturally. So they'll look at that scripture and don't even know the context of it. But they'll just make YouTube sites and everything saying you're not supposed to have the gospel with, with charge. You're not supposed to charge. And the scripture is not even saying that. 
We're going to show you what it's saying. But read, let's show, show them what they're suffering from first. Read it. Unto their own destruction. They do what? As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. They'll look at Paul's writings wrong and actually teach to their own destruction, as do other scriptures. Now let's see if Paul was saying that you're not supposed to tithe or give money. Let's start at Corinthians 9 and 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 1. Read. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Yeshua our Lord? Go ahead. Are not ye my work in the Lord? So Paul is actually reprimanding the church of Corinth. He's saying, are ye not my work in the Lord? That means Paul set up the church of Corinth. He set up the leaders of Corinth. Read. Verse 2. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. Go ahead. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. He says, listen, you are my work. If I'm not an apostle to anyone, I'm, I'm at least an apostle to you because I've set you up. Now you're going to find that he's reprimanded the church of Corinth because they had a problem with Paul receiving money from the church of Corinth. And when he came to the church of Corinth, he had to build tents because of their carnality. Other areas he was taken care of. Okay. But when he came to Corinth, you had carnal people who was looking, well, he shouldn't be getting money. So he wrote this letter to them. Read. Verse 3. My answer to them that do examine me is this. Paul says, my answer to them who examine me is this. Verse 4. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Do we have not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife? Do we have not power to lead about a sister or a wife? As well as other apostles. As well as other apostles. And as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas. Read. For I only in Barnabas. Have we not power to forbear working? Do we have power to forbear working? He says, listen, we don't have to work because you are my work. So when, when the fruits come in from the work so that we can finish it, the leaders and the teachers must partake. He's going to show you that. And he's going to go back to the law on them. Read. Verse 7. Who go of a warfare at any time at his own charges? Who go of the warfare and pay to go to war themselves? Okay. There's a defense budget that paid for the military to go to war. If you told somebody they had to go to war and pay for it themselves, you would have no warriors. Okay. So if you're looking for people to war and tear down the lies and bring forth the truth, these leaders are not supposed to do this at their own charge. That's what Paul is saying here. It's actually the reverse of what they're talking about when they go into this scripture and, erron and, and, erroneously, and, and, and erroneously break the scripture down and butcher it. Just because they don't want to pay tithe. If you don't want to pay tithe, then don't pay it. Don't, don't, don't try to use the scriptures to excuse your sin. Okay? Don't try to use this, the scriptures to excuse it. Read. Who planteth a vineyard? Who planteth a vineyard? And eateth not of the fruit thereof. Now, don't, don't forget, Paul planted the church of Corinth. Should he not eat of the fruits that came from his work? Now that the work is prospering and, and fruit is coming in, and they're looking at him saying, well, he shouldn't get no fruit. You're not supposed to get anything from this. Read. Or who feedeth a flock? Who feedeth a flock? And eateth not of the milk of the flock. And eat not of the milk of the flock. If you have taken care of the flock and did what you want, now it's bringing forth, it's, it's yielding uh, uh, milk, it's yielding wool. You're going to use that for flax, for clothing. You're going to use that now because you have helped nurture the flock. So the people are coming in and the spoils are coming in and, 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 and they're going out and getting things to help the work. Why can't the leaders partake? And who is it going to look on the side and, and say, well, they shouldn't be getting that? And that's how you can tell these are people who have never built anything. You cannot build anything without a treasure in place. And no one in any church can set up a treasure without the law of the 10% which the Most High instituted before Levi. That's the financial base. That's the minimum that's supposed to be given. That's not... Uh, an exception and, and saying that offering is what's supposed to be given. No, 
an offering is what you give from free will. The 10% is the law. They have reversed it and say that the offering has now become the law. You cannot build the business of the Most High without first instituting what he say do financially. Okay? Read. Verse 8. Say I these things as a man. Read it. Or say if not the law also. He says, the law says this also. So Paul is going back to the law. And I'm going there because some of these people who are using that scripture erroneously are saying that the tithe was a law under Levi. That's how, you, that's how you know that they have no idea and they're young according to the scriptures and can't really understand the scriptures. And they link to Peters 3 and 15. They're unlearned. The law of tithing started well before Levi. The law of tithing started in Abraham, paying 10% to Melchizedek. It was reinforced when we came out of Egypt, and that same law was given to the Levitical priesthood. And don't forget, Christ came after the order of not Levi, Hebrews 7, but the order of Melchizedek. So now that 10% moves from the Levites to those that are under Christ. See? Finish reading so we can show you what they're airing in that particular scripture, though, at Verse 9. Read. For it is written in the law of Moses. It's written in the law of Moses. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox, or the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. How can you muzzle the ox that tread the corn? That means if someone is working in the vineyard, and therefore the fruits are coming in, how can you muzzle the one who's doing the work? That's like having an ox uh, uh, pulling a plow in a cornfield and muzzling it where it can't eat. If it don't eat, then it ain't going to plow. So this is actually saying the reverse of what they're going to this scripture for. And I think they go to this scripture erroneously, but the Most High have them go there and probably have hopes of them reading the whole chapter and understanding that they're wrong. Read. Do if the Most High take care for oxen? Do the Most High take care for oxen? Read. Verse 10. Or say if he it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written. Go ahead. That he that ploweth should plow in hope. He that ploweth should plow in hope. And that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. And if you're threshing in hope, you have to be partakers of the hope. Read. Verse 11. If we have sown unto you spiritual things. Paul says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things. It is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. It is a great thing that we shall reap your carnal things. Read. Verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you. If others be partakers of this power over you. That means other people are taxing you and you're not saying anything against it. Are not we rather? Are not we rather? You have people saying, well, listen, they shouldn't be getting 10%. Well, they'll pay Uncle Sam 40% and don't say anything. When the government haven't sold anything spiritual into you. Read. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. We have not used this power. Paul says we have not used this power. But, Read. but suffer all things. He's, they suffered all things. Not because they wanted to. Because the church of Corinth was carnal. The other areas were set up, made sure Paul was taken care of according to the law. Read. Lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Why? Because these brothers so focused on Paul, they wouldn't do the work. So he said, listen, I don't want anything from y'all. And Paul still taught it. When, he, when you read the gospel, I mean, read the epistles, it shows you that Paul would build tents every time he went to Corinth. So that they not so they, they won't be looking at the money. And he had another thing with them because he would wait, they would wait till he come and then be saying, Well, we don't we don't really have things together for you here. So that's when Paul told them in Corinth, upon the first day of the week, you put it in store so there'd be no gathering when I come. So he told them every Sunday to put their money together so that when he come. The treasury is there for him so that he don't have to work and teach the people. See? That's what the first day of the week was for. Because on the Sabbath, you're not supposed to do that. On Sunday was the gathering of the money. 
the business because that's the first business day of the week. So he says, put your money together for the business on Sundays. And when I come, y'all don't have to get together and make sure I'm okay. See? Read. This is the middle, the middle of verse 12. Go ahead. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. We have not used this power. We have not used this power. But suffer all things. Go ahead. Lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Lest we should hinder the gospel. Read. Verse 13. Do ye not know that they which do minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And I don't understand how they go to this script and then talk about Levi. Paul is actually comparing himself to what the Levites received. In order for them to get anything in the temple... 10% must have been given to them from the people. Remember? But they use Levi and say, well, Levi's done away with. Well, Paul is comparing himself to what the Levi's received. See? That's actually doing what? That's giving weight to the 10%. That's giving even more credence to the 10% in the New Testament. Read. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple they live of the temple who did that levi read and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar and those that wait at the altar are partakers of the altar who was that in the old testament levi he's comparing himself to them so the law that was instituted there applies in the new testament read verse 14 even so have the most high ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. See? Same thing. So instead of it going to Levi, it now goes to those that set up the churches of Christ. See? So if somebody don't want to pay tithes, don't pay tithes. That's just a law you're not following. Okay? But don't try to use these scriptures that you're pulling out to say that it's claiming you're not supposed to get 10%. Doesn't say that. Finish reading. Verse 15. But I have used none of these things. But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For if it were better, for it were better for me to die, than that any man should make my glory in void. Go ahead. Verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. He says, because necessity is laid upon me. There's going to be things he'll always need. Read. Yea, woe is unto me. Woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel. So he say, I have to preach it anyway, even though you all don't want to support. Read. Verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly. If I do it willingly. I have a reward. I have a reward. But if against my will, but if, but if it's against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. A dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Verse 18. What is my reward then? What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. And when he say without charge, it's because he didn't want to be an offense to the brothers who was looking at the money. He didn't want that to be a stumbling block to them. So he says, listen, I'm going to do this without charge. So that y'all can't say I'm trying to get the money here. I'm going to teach you for free. Read. Uh, what is my reward then? Verily, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Read on. That I may, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. Because he had the power to take it, but if he would have took it, then they would have looked at that as a stumbling block. And they would have claimed that he was abusing the power he had. So he chose not to take anything at all. He had the power to do it. Read. And but, that's only in the church of Corinth, mind you. See, a lot of people, when they read these, don't even know the scenarios and the reasons Paul wrote letters to particular churches. Finish reading what you got there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. You had something? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, get, get what you had first. Uh, this is uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 8. They show that the other church is paid. And they, read, yeah, read it. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 7 through 8. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye may be exalted because I have 
preached to you the gospel of God freely. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. Read it again. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. He got money from the other churches to make up for what they wasn't bringing. That means he even got more from the other churches to try to balance them. See that? So the other churches was actually given and he had to actually ask for more to make sure the church of, of Corinth can stay running. Because they wasn't doing their part. See that? Why? Because he had to come to Corinth on his own accord. And guess what? There was no airplanes back then. So if you had ships and all those things, that was top money to travel. Okay? You had to have you had to have people on board the ships. You had to have crew on board the ships. You had all these people had to be paid. And the only thing Corinth was dealing with was, well, we we don't know if we can make sure that he's okay. Why do brothers go to that scripture concerning uh, uh, money in Corinth? Why? Because they're carnal just like the brothers in Corinth were concerning it. That's why. That scripture is not saying you're not supposed to pay 10%. That order of Melchizedek is instituted in law. Okay? And the majority of people that teach, that set things up and do things, put in more than 10%. Okay? Finish reading that point there. In Corinthians 9. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. Go ahead. For though I be free from all men. Though I be free from all men. Yet have I made myself servant unto all. Go ahead. That I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. Unto the Jews he became unto un a Jew. That I might gain the Jews. Go ahead. To them that are under the law as under the law. Go ahead. That I might gain them that are under the law. Verse 21. To them that are without law as without law, being not without law to the Most High, but under the law of Christ. So this is going into a different topic altogether. But all in all, Paul was actually reprimanding the church of Corinth. Because they was trying to examine him and make reasons of not supporting his work there, even though he set it up. All right. So I wanted to put that out there. You cannot go to that scripture and say that tithe are done away with. OK, Christ came under the order of Melchizedek and Melchizedek was Shem, the priest of Abram. Let's go there in Genesis and let's finish it up on that to show you that the 10 percent was instituted before Levi. And that kills that Levitical thing. And then some people say, well, tithing used to be substance, sheep or or clothing or and they're right. Or horses or whatever the case is. But I don't know anyone that got 10 horses and want to send a horse. Okay. Or 10 sheep and want to send one sheep. All right. And to prove to you that the treasury had money. Don't forget Christ was laying over at, at the treasury and was looking at the people put, put money in. And he says, well, who put in more, the rich man or the woman who had two pence? So that was those were coins. So they'll just look around for things because they don't want to pay tithe. Just don't pay tithe. But there's no scripture that say you're not supposed to. Just keep that in mind. Just don't pay. You have that freedom. It's your money. But don't claim that it's, that it's the law in the Bible that's saying this to soothe your conscience. All right. Let's go. Uh, Genesis chapter 14 verse... 18. Read it. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Go ahead. Verse 19. And we know that Melchizedek is Shem. It tell you that he's Adonadazek in the book of Jasher. In Hebrews it says Adonadazek, or first being interpreted king of righteousness. That's what Adonadazek means. And later interpreted king of Salem, which is Melchizedek. So in Moses' interpretation, it's Melchizedek. In Jasher's interpretation, it's Adonadazek. Read. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Go ahead. 
and he bless and blessed be the most high God, which have delivered thine enemies into thy hand. Go ahead. And he have gave and he gave him types of all. He gave him what? And he gave him types of and all. And he gave him types of all. Why are we going here? This actually killed that notion that tithes started with Levi. Okay? Melchizedek, king and priest, received 10% from Abram while Levi was in Abraham's loins. Okay? So when Levi began to receive it after we were out of Egypt when we set up our land, that was just continuing a law that was instituted before Levi. So it had nothing to do with the law of Moses. It's in respect of the priesthood to establish the orders from the heavens, the orders that the Most High established from the beginning. And then Christ came in, in the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because after Shem, after Melchizedek, the king and priesthood was split. Where Levi became the priest and Judah became the king. But now Christ came on the scene to make those two different functions one again. And his church would be under that union, under the orders of Melchizedek. So the 10% don't go to Levi. It's been transitioned to Christ's church. What is the order of Melchizedek? Well, financially, it's the 10% that was given to him from Abram. That's one part of it. Okay? If you want to speak of it in tithing, speaking strictly in the tithing portion of it. That's what we're talking about right now. It's higher levels than that when it comes to Melchizedek. But part of it is 10% in appreciation of the one who sown something spiritual into you to have you come and cleave closer to the most high. 10% is the minimum. An offering, a free will offering, is a separate law that some will give from their hearts. All right? So I hope that was established. I hope that's fine. There's no issues there. And guess what? I'm, I'm waiting for someone to give some scripture to say something different. Christ says, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy but to fulfill. So you can't pick and choose. Or you now you're dealing like the Christians now. Okay? Oh well, we don't gotta we don't gotta pay 10%. Well, that was a law. Same way Christians say, well, listen, I can eat pork, I can eat shrimp, crab, lobster. Well, the most high said eat clean, clean food. And then they'll try to use scriptures to give when or give some type level of credence to their sin. Okay. And again, usually these are people who are not with an organized uh, 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 growth or productive movement. These are just people by themselves someplace who really don't want to see anything happen. Because why? Money is a defense. In order to build something, you do need the finances to build it, to travel, to do the things that need to be done to finish. All right. So I wanted to put that out there. All right.